Welcome to the Smart Business Revolution. 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 Do you want a revolution? Yeah. You say you want a revolution. Revolution. The revolution. It's going on right now. Welcome to The Revolution, the Smart Business Revolution podcast, where we ask today's most successful entrepreneurs to share the tools and strategies they use to build relationships and connections to grow their revenue. Now, now, your host for The Revolution, John Corcoran. Hey, welcome everyone. John Corcoran here and welcome to another live episode where it's just me solo for the first time in many years. Uh, coincidentally, my business partner, Jeremy, had two different conflicts, so wasn't able to make it at the last live stream that we did and wasn't able to make it today. But in this episode, I'm going to dive in on a topic that I love talking about, which is how to build your network with intention. And I'll get into it in a moment. I'll explain exactly what I mean. But Basically, I'm a huge proponent of deliberately and intentionally building your network and connecting with people who you resonate with and where there is the opportunity for collaboration and synergies in some way professionally. And so we're going to dive into that. But first, before we do that, you know, every week I talk with amazing guests, CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs, investors, venture capitalists in the startup community, in the business world. Go back, take a look at some of my past episodes. Like I recently interviewed the co-founder and original CEO of Netflix, uh, executives from EO, YPO, members of those fine organizations, uh, leaders and founders of Activation Blizzard, Lending Tree, Open Table, many more. I'm also the co-founder of Rise25, where we help to connect B2B business owners to their ideal prospects. And this episode, of course, is brought to you by Rise25, where we help B2B business is to get clients referrals and strategic partnerships with done for you podcasts and content marketing. And if you ever have been curious about building relationships deliberately using a podcast, I love to talk about it. I'm happy to call hop on a call with you. So reach out to me, send me an email at John at rise 25 media.com, or you can email the company at support at rise 25 media.com. All right. So we're going to dive into this topic and what do I mean by how to build your network with intention? What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is, you know, a lot of people actually don't build their network intentionally. So the network that we have will change and evolve over time, whether we do anything deliberately with intention or not. In other words, we will meet new people. You will meet people all the time. And some people will fade away. You know, you just don't get in, in touch with people anymore. You don't talk to them as frequently. You don't see them as frequently. Maybe you move away. Maybe you have other priorities in life. And so your network change is constantly changing and evolving. And you can either do that with intention or without intention, and it will happen to you. In other words, you will find yourself surrounded by a network which is comprised of people who you used to work with, people who you went to college with, people who happen to live on your street, people that, you know, for whatever reason, entered your life. Or you can be very deliberate and intentional, intentional about it. And you can decide, you can look around and you can decide, these are people who I want to get to know. These are people who I want to connect with, people who I resonate with. We have shared values. We have shared goals. We're marching down similar paths. Or you want to be marching down a similar path. You can look at someone and say, I admire that person. I admire what they're doing. I'd like for them to be in my orbit, in my universe. I would like to get to know them. And you can very deliberately get to know them. And I'm a huge proponent of doing that. And I think you should be doing that. So first, there's a couple of questions that there's five primary areas that I want to talk about here. And first of all is the first question you want to ask yourself is what are your goals? What are you looking to do? You have to look at, you know, what's your history, your career or your business? Where are you coming from? Where do you want to go? And a lot of people don't stop and, and slow down and think about that. Are you really happy with what you're doing right now? Is it something you want to do completely different? Because if you really ultimately, if your passion is that you want to do something different, then you're never going to be happy going to the same events, conferences, connecting with the same people that meet yesterday's goals or meet the person the values of the person you used to be, not the person that you want to be, the one, person you want to come, want to become. And so 
that's incredibly important to get really clear about what your goal is. And, and once you get clear about that, then you can start lining up, you know, who are the right people who would be a great referral partner in this area that I want to go in and who are, would be great clients for the work that I want to do, who would be great strategic partners, who are the people in this orbit, in this sphere, in this niche, whatever you want to call it. That's really step number one. Step number two is what are the tools that you are going to use in order to build that relationship? Now, I have used all kinds of different tools in order to do that. And when I'm talking about tools, I'm not talking about hacks or software or something like that. I'm talking about, you know, we're proponents of content and networking, combining those two, using your content in order to build relationships and network. And for years now, I've done it using a podcast, but I've also done it using articles, writing for different publications, blog posts. You can use Facebook Lives, LinkedIn Lives like we're doing here now. You can use um, writing a book. What I found was you want to have the right combination of ease of use so you maximize the number of relationships that you're building and lack of complexity and efficiency and also attractiveness to the person that you're seeking to connect with. So, you know, it might be super easy for you to write a blog post on your website, but does that really have appeal to others? For many years, I wrote articles uh, in Forbes and Huffington Post and, and different publications like that, which had great appeal, but it was so labor intensive. It took me so much time, energy, and effort to get those pieces published that it ended up resulting in very low output. I ended up producing very few articles per year. I ended up building very few relationships because of it. So I could continue doing it, but it just wouldn't be as efficient. What I found was using a podcast that it was the right combination of all of those things. You know, if you do a weekly podcast, even if you take some vacations over the course of a year, you've got 45 or so 50 people that you are strategically building relationships, deepening a relationship with. And for anyone, that's going to be super meaningful if you do it right. And it's going to have a big impact on your business. So that's how I've always found podcasts combined with content marketing, turning it into micro content these days across your social channels is the right combination of maximizing relationships plus efficiency and, and also the ability to delegate all the pieces off of your plate that you shouldn't be focusing your energy on. Like, for example, I could be writing books, but if you're writing a book, it's it, it, if you're writing it yourself, certainly very time consuming, very labor intensive, and the output is not high. The number of relationships built is not high. Uh, unless you do do one of these compilation books where you're, you're featuring a lot of people. Um, third piece, what is your outreach messaging? What is your outreach strategy? Because you can only go so far with your initial network, but you want to actually craft your ne- your messaging. This is incredibly important, especially if you're just getting started with doing a podcast. Your messaging is really important because you have to position it in the right way. Uh, Or else you'll fall into the trap of of people not wanting to be a guest on your podcast because it's something new. But that doesn't need to be the case. We've had many clients with a quote unquote new podcast who get tremendous guests on there. So you have to think about what's your outreach strategy, what's your messaging, how are you going to position this using, to borrow my friend Michael Port's phrase, the velvet rope strategy. That is um, to position it in a way that the podcast is something very special and that not everyone is let in the door. It's not like you're just going to take anyone. Then the next piece that I like to, to think about here is how do you want the person that you're featuring to experience, go through that experience of being your guest? And I like to say that the, one of the best books that's ever been written about podcasting was written over 110 years ago. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. And the reason why I say it's a book about podcasting because it's really all about how you build relationships with people and and create influence. And you do it by taking interest in other people, featuring them, giving them the spotlight, making them feel like a million bucks. And anything that doesn't, 
accomplish all of this should be stripped away. You should take it, remove it. You want to make them feel amazing. You want to make them feel like you are putting the spotlight on them. Now, I will add a caveat that you do also want to share your own expertise. You want that guest walking away knowing something about you and also having respect for what you bring to the table. So it's okay. I think actually some of the best podcasters do a good job of weaving in their expertise and having a conversation and bringing and, and sharing, mentioning some of their background and history and client work that they've done and successes that they've had in a way that isn't obtrusive and, and doesn't seem obnoxious. I've also seen people do it where it's really obnoxious and you can just tell they're just trying to sell the guest and it's, it's overwhelming. So you don't want to do that. But most people don't end up on that far end of the spectrum. All right. And then there, so there's that piece, the experience of the interview, how they're going to experience it, how they're going to go through it. Um, and then there's the follow-up piece after it's over. Now, here's where a lot of people drop the ball. How are you going to take that relationship further? I personally, you know, I don't have a scientific system. You know, there's some, I've been a guest on podcasts where the person afterwards follows up. It's almost like mechanically, you know, a month, three months, six months. And it's really quite annoying and it doesn't feel personal at all. So I try not to do that. Um, I try and just follow up when I have the opportunity to, when I think of a reason to follow up with that person. Now that means that probably I, I, some people do slip through the cracks and I don't follow up with them as much as I should, but it's for that reason that I actually am a big believer in maximizing the, what we call the post interview collaboration conversation. So immediately when the interview is over, well, first of all, before the interview even starts, you want to make sure that you know if that guest has a hard stop. And if so, when, because you need to, be mindful of when that is and end the interview with enough time that you're going to be able to have that follow-up conversation. Because if you don't, then there may never be a time or you may never get that person back on the phone. So when you make sure that you know when they have a hard stop so you can leave 10 minutes or so, so you can have that follow-up conversation. And that's when people are excited. That's when they're, um, they're really appreciative of you taking that interest in them. And if you've done it right, if you've shared what you do, and if that person has a need for it or someone that they know has a need for it, then you, you benefit from the principle of reciprocity, which is that people want to reciprocate when someone have done a favor for you. They don't want to be left, left indebted to you. Most people will want to repay that favor in some way, and it will materialize in the form of um, referrals or maybe some client work if you leave that time afterwards so you can have that further conversation. And then I think it's a great thing to offer some additional wisdom or advice to offer to give them some of your expertise. I'll give you an example. When I started doing the podcast, I was practicing law. I started by interviewing my legal clients. And oftentimes when it was over, you know, people are like, geez, well, when do I get a lawyer on the other end of the line who's not billing me in six minute increments? I'm going to ask them a question. And so at the end, they'd be like, John, can I ask you a legal question and i'd be like well yes you can go ahead and you know many times it would lead into a referral or some client work or something like that um but you can even take it further you can offer you can let's say that you are a graphic design expert graphic designer we have a graphic design agency or something like that you could say hey you know i was looking at your website i noticed a bunch of the images are cut off and blurry um i'd be happy to give you some feedback on some ways in which you can improve that. Um, some areas in which I saw that there were some blurry images, something like that would be appreciative in many cases by a guest because you're sharing your wisdom, your expertise, or maybe you are do some kind of consulting or whatever it is you do. So be prepared to offer something like that. I wouldn't do a hard pitch sale ever, I think you're going to burn your reputation if you do that, but it's okay to offer something as a give to that guest for being a guest on your show. All right. So that's it for today. 
Um, just to recap, number one, get really clear on what your goal is, what you want to do with your career or your business, what direction you are going. Because th from there, you'll be able to figure out who are the people that you want to connect with. Number two, what is the tool or tools that you're going to be using in order to build your network with intention? I mentioned a bunch of different alternatives, different types of tools that you can use. I personally am a big fan of using a podcast, um, which these days is really kind of, uh, in many ways, merging with other technologies out there because from the podcast, it radiates out and you can create a lot of different other assets as well. You can push it out into iTunes and Apple Podcasts and Stitcher and Spotify and Pandora and Amazon Music and YouTube. And then you can create micro content, which you share on LinkedIn and you share it on, on different social channels. So it's, it's, that's where you start, but then it, it can actually become multiple different things. Create a, a, a thousand, 3,000 to 5,000 word blog post on your website, which delivers tremendous SEO value. So those that, you want to think about that, the tools. And then the next piece, number three, is what's your outreach strategy? What's your messaging? How are you positioning yourself, especially if you're new? so that you get people saying, yes, absolutely. I would love to do it. I would love to be a guest on your show. Number four, how is the person that you are featuring experiencing, going through that experience of being featured by you? Are you, make, are you putting them on a pedestal? Are you making them feel like a million bucks? Are they walking away thinking, that was wonderful. I want to do more business with that person. And then finally, number four, Number five, what's your follow-up? How does it lead to a collaboration? How do you keep that relationship going? Do you have an offer of some sort which is free where you can deliver additional value to that person? Or can you introduce them to someone else in your network that they would stand to benefit from knowing? So, that's it for now. Want to learn more? Go to rise25media.com. Email us at support at rise25media.com. Or you can email me personally at john at rise25media.com if you have any questions. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you for listening to the Smart Business Revolution podcast with John Corcoran. Find out more at smartbusinessrevolution.com. And while you're there, sign up for our email list and join the revolution. 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 And be listening for the next episode of the Smart Business Revolution podcast.